Get YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> Check it out, man. Um, so I just wanted to talk real quick. Um, a lot of interesting things. I shot this video, then I said, you know what? Let me reshoot it, especially after getting some um, interesting information. Um, shout out to DJ Payne One. This dude is awesome. Um, Beat Stars producer. Um, done some really good things and really cleared out a lot of things about sample clearances and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> recently was talking about the bad journalism that that that's going on. And I, I mean, you know what? I'm so done with like the media and 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 and, and journalism in, in general. I mean, until we get some real ethical people that's really want to report the news and report it right. I mean, a lot of people just want to get the headlines and, and, and or clickbait or rebate or anything to just draw you in and, and, and give you basic information. And because of where we are in the state of the world today, everything we want to do, we want to get it done fast, fast, fast. It's like we're in a microwave age where we don't take enough time to slow down research and get all information. Um, the thing came up about Old Town Road and how dude is getting sued and all this other stuff leave at least the headlines lead you to believe that type of stuff about sample clearances and, and then you'll start having comments where people are like that's why i don't sample and that's why this that the other you know what i came up in an era where they took a lot of stuff out of the schools we didn't have a lot of instruments i wanted to learn how to play guitar it wasn't a guitar in my goddamn school so there wasn't nobody there that could teach me guitar. I thought the guitar, the bass was like the coolest instrument. But those, that's, that's, those are the things that are missing. When you go to certain schools, they have access to all these things. But urban schools, no. Right? So we, we took what we had and made the most out of what we had to be creative and make music. Hence, that's how you got the DJs, the sampling, and stuff like that. I'm not going to go deep into the history. That being said, when it first came out, it was a big deal. People were like, oh, you're not a, you're not a musician. You're not, you're not, it's not real creative. It's stealing. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Shut up. Fact of the matter is, it's still alive and kicking the day, and it's doing well. Now, granted, you still have people that's getting sued for interpolations and not clearing samples and stuff like that. But now we know the state of the music, and we know what needs to be done, and we know how to be responsible. And more and more resources are out there now, more than ever, to not even have to really deal with that or worry about that. But you still got some people out there that says, you know what, that's why I never sample. Well, fine. Great. Don't sample. I because, because what you're doing is, and what I believe is, what a lot of people is missing out is on a powerful tool and something that's very influential in this music. Not just from vinyl, but even the construction kits. The influx of construction kits now, the influx of, of artists putting out sample packs and making royalty-free samples for people to chop up and be inspired by is greater than ever. The um, track live where you get the ability to sample music and then buy the, you know, and then, and then buy the license or, you know, clear the sample when you put out a particular project. And I mean, it's, it's getting there because they realize how influential and how powerful music is. Music is a feeling and emotion. And sometimes you hear something and, and, and you get, you get inspired and you create something and then someone else feels it too. Music is more feeling than, than, than trying to be industrious and make something that sounds like this or cookie cutting it. Well, I gotta have these hi hats and I gotta have the 808 and I gotta. No, you just gotta make music that you fucking feel. Just make music that you feel. You know, and, and, and I think that's what's missing. And granted, we do have a bunch of music that all sound the same and people ride with it. But the ones that are timeless, man, are the ones that you feel. The ones that, that stand the test of time are the ones that you feel. You know, that's why Illmatic is one of the greatest albums ever. That's why Thriller is one of the greatest albums ever. That's why Quincy Jones is one of the greatest producers ever. I mean, because they make timeless music. And I think that's what we all shoot for. Just go for what you feel. If you like it and it feels good to you, fuck it. It's good. <laughs> now, I don't care if, 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 if only three other people like it. If you like it, the other billion, million, thousands, 10, 20 people don't like it should not sway how you feel about your music. If it sounds good to you, it makes you feel good, guess what? You won. You won. You did it. All I got to say is, don't limit yourself to your creativity. Because even people who so-called make original music has been inspired by other music. 
I mean, you hear it all the time. You will always hear influences, influences from other music and other musicians, even if you're a musician. You're playing something like, oh yeah, this is all original. Yeah, maybe so, but there's some influences there and someone could dissect it and say, you know what, this sounds very similar to this and very similar to that because it's only but so many new notes. There's only but so many chords and variations. I mean, it just is what it is. It's just how you intertwine those things. And bringing other elements into the mix is what really makes things unique. So, so I will say this. Sampling is a very, very powerful tool with what I do. I have been making some original tracks, but they're still, all of it is inspired by samples. Even when I'm making original tracks. And then I'm taking samples from royalty, royalty free packs and, and things like that. And I think when you're starting to see more musicians also utilize the power of samples because it brings an element to your track that is out of this world. So take advantage of it. Let's 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 utilize it and make the most out of it. So how do I um how do I use samples? Um every kind of way and I sample everything. Anything that sounds good, I sample it. I don't make these rules for myself because I don't want to put myself in a box, meaning I don't just sample from vinyl. I do get construction kits. I do sample from live sources. I do sample from whatever I can get to sound. If it's on YouTube and I can't get nowhere else, guess what? I get it from YouTube. If it's on a CD, I get it off a CD. If it's an MP3 and I can't find a clear version, guess what? I'm using an MP3 because I want to get the idea out. I want to get the music out. I want to get it out of my system. So I do whatever I need to make that happen. You should be doing the same thing. So. The um, thing I've had more fun with now, with all the resources that we have, man, this music production thing is a lot of fun, and it's a good way to really truly express yourself through samples, loops, construction kits, etc. So a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll take a vinyl sample, if I like it, and then I'll play some live instrumentation to it, and sometimes I'll find that key and I'll find other loops or samples that complement it, chop them up, and blend the, blend it all together. It could be anything. So this this beat I'm about to display now is actually something I got a sample from a record, right? Then I took a loop from a construction kit, bass line. Then I played strings over top of it. And then I took a drum loop. At first I was running the drum loop because I threw this on Instagram, but it sounded way sloppier than what I wanted. So what I did was I had that drum loop chopped up and I actually played the drums the way I wanted to play the drums and it came out okay. Now, it's a gritty joint. Um, I'm really like feeling the Conway and Griselda sound right now because that's where I come from. Um, reminds me of old Wu-Tang and underground hip hop and I just love making all kinds of hip hop, but I really like that stuff. So what I did was I made a grimy beat. But not only that, um, Pete Rock said you can find something uh, off or you can make music out of it. It's something in every record. I don't care whether it does, just doesn't appeal to you and you don't feel that vibe and don't do nothing for you. I get that. But realistically, that's something or a way to flip any type of um, sample. And it's, sometimes it's just a matter of listening to and seeing what resonates with you and what, what you pick up on. So I'm going to go to the turntable, let you hear it. Hopefully I can keep this angle and just keep rocking through so y'all can see what went down and how I made this beat. But um, I got the record on the turntable, so we're gonna listen to that so you can see how it all started. <laughs> sample so what I did was I actually pitched it down so if I take it back my bad so I actually pitched it down bop, bop, bop. so let's put it back because it'll change my sound I pitched it down 
then I played it in a different way. There's a second one utilizes it. So, second one. Right? Then, the drums. For the first sequence, in the second sequence, da 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 da. All right. Go back to the second sequence, and let's hear the drum loop. So that's the loop. So I just. I just played the drums. So, um, and then... So, one thing I did was that sometimes I'm good at just going to the keys or figuring out what key the song is in. Um, but in this case, I actually use a tool called um, Mixed In Key Studio Edition. You can assign that to your track and get what key that is in and then therefore you can go through your loops if you got a, 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 a influx of sounds and construction kits you can go through your loops to find bass samples keyboard samples string samples anything that's in the same key to complement it now of course i chopped this sample up to match to play it like an instrument to match my sample that you know to match the sample so let's just break this down like this here's this one. So the way the bass complemented was like this. Alright? So that's for um sequence two. So now we're gonna go to sequence one because they're different. So again. So now let's listen to the two together. Now let's let me go back to my program real quick. Make sure I be. filter on this. I'm going to turn it off so you can hear it without it. So I wanted that gritty sound, so I didn't want the um, bass to sound so crisp. So I threw a low pass filter on it and got this. sound I was looking for and then on the third tr on the fourth track I incorporated strings
So that this, those strings are actually complemented by our, our organ. And I have them low in the mix so it can just complement the track just a little bit. So let's listen to the three elements together. <laughs> drums to it and because the drums are dirty and it gives you it gives me that low fi that grimy gritty type uh dark air where you could tell some real street shit type rap to so check it out <laughs> the strings different so this just gives you an idea of the power samples the power loops and, and, and the power chopping samples and what you can do and how creative this stuff is so I was able to take something from a piece of vinyl that I like found the bass line that complemented by a key right I chopped the bass line and played the bass line along with the, the vinyl sample to, to, to make it sound like it actually all goes together then played live instrumentation over top of it with the strings, took a break beat, chopped that up, and played the drums the way I wanted them because the drums is as dirty as I want, and simple four-track joint, and it's something that's pretty decent. <laughs> Still got the process of maybe mixing it, adjusting some volumes, getting some EQs right. But now I got me what I like to call a gem. I call it fistful of dollars, and that's something I can hear. You know, maybe a Benny the Butcher or or, or, or a Conway ripping, or maybe even Al Camino. So, um, yeah. So be inspired, and not only that. <clears throat> the other key is that record. When I went through that record, I'm like, I'm not feeling this. All like like the. The, the, the strings and the, and, and, and the guitars. I'm like, uh, I'm not feeling this. But I found a little element, a small piece, a small snippet that was able to give me something that was a, that, that, got that, that gave me that vibe. And when you listen to this... It's easy to miss on that record if you're not listening. I mean, it's easy to listen because you're listening to this record. Oh, there's nothing on here. There's something on everything. And sometimes you're just looking for that little minute piece that 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 reaches out to you. Now, someone else can listen to it. They'll probably get something else out of it. But sometimes I'm listening for long loops. I'm listening for short loops. Sometimes I'm looking for just certain sounds. And even if it was just one minute sound in there that I liked, that I thought could bring spice to a track or it inspired me to make a track, I'm going to use it. So there you have it. Um, the same thing when you're going through your um, when you're going through loop packs and stuff like that, you'll find things that inspire you, and you can hear whole songs around them, and then you can build on it. So it's really cool. So if you really want to get into this sampling thing, I just say, hey, you know, sample everything, <laughs> sample records, sample vinyls, and, and and really get into it because the power loops and the power samples ain't going nowhere. It's evident in our environment and how things are right now. And what the reason why I say that is, I mean, when you got places like Drum Broker, you got places like MS, MSX2 Audio, shout out to my man Sim. Um, when you got Noise, which is probably one of my best or favorite subscription um, services because you don't have, there's no credit system with it. You download whatever it is you want to use, you got access to everything, even some of their VSTs that they created. Um, and it's a yearly subscription, but you can download whatever you want. You can download the whole, whole library, which will take quite a bit of hard drive space. But you you can um, download the whole, whole library and say, you know what, I'm done. Um, new content is coming up on there regularly, so that's why I like it. And they got a cool VST instrument that what, what it does is it allows you to go through those samples that they have 
and you can adjust the tempo and you can listen to it while you're playing your beat in real time. So you can adjust the tempo, you can even adjust the key of how the sample's being played and manipulate it. And then the cool thing about it is, once you find it, you drag that sample out onto your desktop or into your DAW and it will stay the way that you had it set up from the DAW originally. Meaning that if the original sample's in the key of C, you switch it to the, to the key of G, and you change the tempo from 120 to 92, when you drag it out, it's gonna be 92 and it's gonna be in the key of G. So it's gonna be set up exactly the way you want it. Now you can throw it into your DAW and chop it up. Noise, don't sleep on noise. Now I'm quite sure everybody's familiar with Splice. Splice, I really like Splice because of the variety. You have a large variety of sample stuff and the fact that you can just take things piece by piece by piece by piece. You can do the thing, same thing with all these um, subscription services, but um, Splice just has a, a, a unique way of doing it, and I like the variety. And I like the you know the, the, the packs that they have. The other one is sounds. Now, the unique thing with sounds is you may find some stuff and sounds that you found in Splice because you're going to have some of the same creators on both platforms. So, but um, but the way they do it is quite different. Um, I like the fact that Splice has creates its own folder. I can go in there when I download stuff. I can go into my that folder and go into the packs and then drag the packs into my external hard drive. So I always have you know, so I always have access to those sounds. Um, sounds just downloads it to your download folder and then you gotta take it from there. For on a Mac, every time it downloads, I just take that original file and then drag it to the. Um, to my hard drive where my backup is. Every so often, once I got everything backed up, I drag them off my main computer's hard drive, to, you know, so I don't dog out the space. And I always have all my stuff backed up on two to three hard drives. So I have two to three hard drives with all my sounds on it. So if something happens, one of them dies, I still have access to all my sounds. Not only that, both of them give you the opportunity that once you um, download a pack and you go back, it will remember what you downloaded. So you don't find yourself using up your credits on something that you've already have in your library. It'll actually let you know. And, and a lot of these, these things will back them up to the cloud anyway. So, and with noise, it does, just doesn't matter because you got access to the whole gambit. So you're not using credits. You're just using whatever the hell you want, which is very, very cool. The other thing I want to shout out is Tracklib. Tracklib is awesome because what happens there is you can go and you can buy the download of a, of a song or a sample that you want, $1.99 or something like that. Then if you find yourself using it for a project or say an artist takes the beat and you want to use it, now you can pay to get it cleared at a reasonable price, like 50. Majority of their samples are like 50 bucks. You know, it's for a certain, uh, a certain length of time and the uh, um, instructions are on the site, but it's relatively cheap. It's relatively it's economical for you to get that done or to let the artist know that, hey, I got this track from Track Live. Is this track, this, that, the other? It will cost X, Y, Z. And then they can pay for it if they can clear it if they want to beat that much. So it's, it, it, made it, it made it very easy. It's making it a lot easier now to do these things. The other cool thing about TrackLib is that by them having a, um, the masters or the publisher for all these tracks, a lot of times you have access to stems. So when you go there, you have you can hear the full production and then you can buy them stemmed out. Meaning like if you hear like this song and, and it's really nice, you're like, man, I just wish I had it without the vocals. Or I just want the instrumental. Or I just want the bass line. Or I just want that keyboard part. A lot of those tracks are broken down in stems, which is freaking cool. So definitely check out TrackLib. It's actually a hot, hot resource to get stuff from. And of course, you got all your other um, sample libraries out there and, and, and places like, you know, um, Modern Producer, um, um, Prime Loops, Big City, Big City Audio. Um, it's a lot of them out there. Um, so it's a, and it's a lot of things that, that can gravitate to what you make and how you create your music. So the world's your oyster. Don't, don't get discouraged about sample clearances and this, that, the other. Don't let that stunt your creativity. At the end of the day, create music. Because even even if Keo was getting sued for Old Town Road, right? I mean, the only reason he's getting sued is because the track is a hit and it, and it did what it needed to do. And it's got the traction. So congratulations to him. 
and now his name is out there, so therefore, other artists will probably want to use him for some production, so therefore, he just raised his stock. So, even if that was the case, maybe it'll be a, a, a win a win in the midst of a, a so-called loss, but that's not the case. So, let's be careful about what, what, what people are putting out there, because everything on the internet is not true, and just because somebody documented, don't make it facts. So, that's it. Power loops, power samples, you know, get out there, create, think outside the box, sample everything. There's no rules to this shit. Make your own. Peace. Yeah.